Let's look at some simple situations where we want to find the force uh, acting on some surfaces due to the applied pressure. We'll look at force on a horizontal plate. So if this plate is sitting horizontally in the bottom of this tank, it's under some height of water, so it'll be at a higher pressure. And as a result, there'll be a net force acting downwards on that plate. And we'd like to know what that force is. So that force, well, it's not actually located at a point like this. It's spread out all over the plate. And because the pressure is uniform over the plate, it's actually spread out uniformly over that whole plate. And so we'll get the total force by integrating over the surface of that plate. It's a double integral over the surface of the pressure times the incremental area. But pressure is the same all over the plate. So if the pressure is the same, we can take P outside the integral. We'll get F equal to P times the integral over the surface dA, which is just the surface area, and that'll be equal to pressure times area. So here's the simplest situation. We've got a uniform pressure applied over the entire area of a plate or a surface, and the result is we get a force that's just equal to pressure times area acting in a direction perpendicular to the plate inwards on the plate from the fluid. Now let's consider force on a vertical plate. That'll get a little more complicated. Same sort of situation. We've got a couple of solid walls here. We've got a fluid that's underwater and we've got a plate here. It's going to have a force on it and again it's not going to be a force that's uniform or that's at a point on this plate it's going to be distributed over the plate but the pressure here it won't be as high as the pressure down here because the pressure is changing as we move down and it's actually linearly increasing so that the pressure force is concentrated more towards the bottom of this plate and let's suppose at the same time that this plate isn't actually a rectangle it's got maybe a triangular shape or maybe some arbitrary shape so that its width varies depending on the on the position. So we could look at a little segment like this that was all at the same distance under the water. The plate is W wide at that point and this little incremental area here is dy thick. We can then still be looking at a force as an integral over the surface of the pressure times the area. So the force, F, will be the integral of the pressure over the area. And we're looking at the area that's projected in the x direction so that it's subject to an x force. And we're going to have to integrate to get over that area. We'll integrate over the height and the width. So we might integrate first over the width and then over the height to take our two-dimensional integral down into two separate dimensions of pressure times the change in width and then the change in height. So that's our dA breaking out into width and height. And pressure is the same all across the width at a given height. So we can wind up with the force equal to the integral over the height times the pressure times the width at that height times d height. Or putting it into a configuration where we're looking at a y-axis and dy, we can have the force equal to the integral from y1 to y2, the pressure as a function of y, the width as a function of y, and the incremental height dy. So dh becomes dy, w is a function of y, p is a function of y, and we need to make sure that we integrate from y1 to y2. Again, in our simplification, we've gotten away from that normal vector. 
So we're going to have to check to make sure that we've chosen all of our signs correctly to get this force acting in the right direction. In most cases, that's going to be fairly straightforward. For instance, here we can see if we go from a lower Y to a higher Y, dy will be positive. If we construct W so that W is a positive quantity, that's positive. And if our pressure is a positive pressure, which it should be, then we'll wind up with a force acting in this direction, which actually matches up with the physical configuration. So with simple situations where we've got flat plates like this, it can be fairly easy to set up this integration. Now it's important when you're doing this uh, to make your life easy and orient your uh, coordinate system with the vertical. So because I've oriented the y-axis with the vertical here, then at any given height y, I'll be at the same depth under the water, and as a result for all values of x along that value of y, I'll have the same pressure. And that makes it much easier to simplify my integral. If I hadn't chosen my y coordinate to be straight up and down and my x coordinate to be horizontal, then I would have wound up with having a more complicated integration to do here. It wouldn't have been impossible, it would have just been a little bit more difficult.